Ladies and gentlemen, Paula Poundstone. from here, we're all going to feel a little silly, so. Well, I'm so glad you're here. You know, and you're such a nice, warm crowd, and sometimes Los Angeles can be not such a nice, warm place. I got in a fight at the Museum of Tolerance over a parking space. I have, I have three kids. I have a 15-year-old, a 12-year-old, and an 8-year-old. Um, it's hard because it changes. I just showed him the other night the movie One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. And I said, Mommy seems good, doesn't she? I think against that backdrop, I really shine. I'm kind of excited because I'm, I'm a million dollars in debt. Now, that's not the exciting part. But it does feel good just to say it. I'll tell you something about being a million dollars in debt. Once you hit a million, <laughs> it feels kind of good. I mean, if I were $100,000 in debt, I'd be working my ass off right now because I'd have a shot at paying it back. <laughs> but once you're a million dollars in debt, it's just like, well, who's kidding who here? <laughs> Does anybody that loans to me really expect to get it back? You know, you just, the kids will say to me, can we go to Disneyland? I say, I don't see why not. <laughs> Excuse me a moment while I receive a sip of beverage. <laughs> and that camera goes up for that. That, that. There's one guy whose job it is to get any drinking shots. Because <laughs> of the little problem I had. I had a little drinking problem, but I guess you heard already. It was kept kind of hush-hush, wasn't it? Out of deference to me and my family. I was actually court-ordered to Alcoholics Anonymous on television. Pretty much blows the hell out of the second A, don't you think? a drinking problem, by the way, and, 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 and in the first place, I want to I wanna say I, I deeply regret the mistakes that I made, and, and, and in the second place, I do feel kind of stupid, because uh, it's so clear now that I had a drinking problem. It was not clear at the time, you know? Uh, there were red flags, and I can see that now. I think that's the good news and the bad news about drinking, is that there are red flags, but they're kind of blurry, and they zip on by. <laughs> I mean, now some of the stuff is just glaring. About three weeks before I went into rehab and I was in a 30-day program for 180 days. <laughs> About three weeks before I went in, I got really drunk one day, went into a pet store and bought a dog. Um, which would not have been that big a deal, except for uh, we had nine cats at the time. <laughs> Believe me, the cats were hiding the alcohol after that. I believe that's when the tough love began. <laughs> we now have 10 cats, a big stupid dog, a bearded dragon lizard, a bunny, and one ant left from my ant farm. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you people. I've been drunk in that pet store before. <laughs> and I don't wanna play the victim here, but I believe they knew. And 
I believe they took advantage. <laughs> Does anybody else's pet store have a wine section? <laughs> Thank you. Some people are going to appreciate these more than others. <laughs> Apparently someone hit something hit home for someone. Maybe somebody's been sharing in a circle as well. I'll tell you. Boy, you haven't lived. I used to drink those one at a time twist top wines. Now the truth is you can get just as messed up as, as, as on any other beverage drinking one at a time twist top wines, but there's something so humiliating about sitting in circle time in rehab with people talking about their, their, their Oxycontin and their shooting smack and their fifth of vodka before breakfast and I was like, I drink those one at a time twist top wines. <laughs> Kind of a loser among losers, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. Not only that, but I, I actually, I swear this is a true story. I went before a judge who said to me at one point, and I was there many, many times, but uh, he said to me at one point, he asked me why I don't drink anymore. I had to hold my lips, not to say, well, it didn't work out that good, did it, you dumb sh**. Just to see the courtroom artist crayons fly. Now you were dressed so fancy, ma'am. Like, did you have any idea where you were going when you came out tonight? <laughs> you have red nail polish on as well. You really okay, did yourself on. up tonight. <laughs> what do you do for a living, ma'am? Uh, I'm an accountant. You're an accountant? Really? So my story of being a million dollars in debt must have made you chafe just slightly. <laughs> You know the amazing I am a million dollars in debt and I have an accountant. What for? I don't know. Change oh, for Christ's sakes. <laughs> I thought I was hearing a funny noise. That's got to be a pretty egregious situation. <laughs> to change my... They must have gone over it and they must be like sweating and talking about it. <laughs> and they're trying to decide if... No, just let her go. No, 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 it's bad. No, she's got to switch my... And then, when they first called you, did you come out right away, or did you kind of hem and haw? I was holding off. Were you holding off? Yeah, because you were hoping it was going to get better. <laughs> it's exactly how Cheney handled shooting his friend in the face. <laughs> Just, I know that feeling. I just hoping if you don't do anything, it'll get better. It doesn't work that way. You gotta come out and switch mics. <laughs> Cheney said that uh, that was one of the most bizarre things in our history. Don't you think, really? Just that whole thing. I was stuck in an airport that day. All day long, I'd been stuck in an airport. Not, no flights going, stuck in the snow. And I looked up on the television and they said that. And I just, it was the best thing that happened to me all day. <laughs> just shows how bad my day was and uh it was uh, uh, the most bizarre story i think i've heard in my lifetime really it's just weird we got to be the laughing stock of every country in the world right now not only that a couple days later his friend came out in front of a bank of microphones in front of the hospital and made truly the strangest press conference i've ever heard he said he's all purple and bruised and he said his wife and himself would like to apologize <laughs> to the cheneys for all that they had put them through. <laughs> you know, they show television in prison. Criminals must have been so upset. Like, geez, the guy I shot got mad. <laughs> he said he always knew that quail hunting was dangerous. <laughs> Which I think quail have long said. <laughs> I'm not sure how quail hunting is dangerous, but apparently they'll come at you with those little things. <laughs> if you miss them on the first shot, they will waddle out at you with that little thing in there. <laughs> Cheney got very reflective, and he said that he was, which I think is good for anybody to get reflective at one time or another in their life. I think he could choose a more important topic, but <laughs> he thought for a couple of days about quail hunting, and he said that he was reconsidering the sport of quail hunting as a result of that horrible accident. And uh, I think unnecessary, given that no one will ever go with him again. <laughs> 
Not if they know they have to apologize after they got shot. Seems like kind of a weird thing. Gee, I miss that microphone guy. It's great having him with us, just knowing someone was paying close attention, I think. Felt good. There's something I started saying that I, it fell out of my head. I have terrible short-term memory loss, um, which I like to think of as presidential eligibility. <laughs> that, by the way, can be said for any president, so please don't go Dixie chicken me over that, really. I, uh... <laughs> I, you know, I'm obviously a... a, a well, not obviously, but I am, in fact, a, a Democrat. And uh, I think, well... Here's the thing, you guys. We should vote as soon as possible. Uh, we do great until we pick a candidate. And then we go straight in the toilet. How does that happen? I think it's because we always choose our nominee from Geppetto's workshop. What? <laughs> I remember I ordered a roast beef sub one time at a, at a submarine sandwich shop and the guy said to me he said do you want everything on it I said no no onions I get the roast beef sub and there were black olives on it so I took it back up to the guy I go there's, there's black olives in my roast beef sub and he said well you said you wanted everything so I had no idea I had to list every hideous, disgusting food <laughs> that belongs nowhere near a roast beef sub. Okay, no coconut. <laughs> no grapefruit. <laughs> if you use Necco wafers, not the black ones. My kids are so sad, they, actually, they, they don't know that I don't cook. And, uh, and I don't cook. They've never actually seen an ingredient in their entire life, I swear to you. They think that um, peel back plastic and cook at 350 uh, for 28 minutes is an old family recipe. <laughs> they've actually said before that like, they've eaten a food someplace and say, we like yours better, mommy. And they don't have any idea there's like Stouffer's. They think it's supposed to be that way. One time they heard there was an early frost and they were excited because it would be good for the vegetables. <laughs> we actually don't celebrate a lot of the regular holidays and my kids get so mad at me about it. We don't celebrate Easter. My kids get mad at me about that, you know? I go, well, first of all, it's not part of our religious beliefs. And second of all, you don't like eggs. <laughs> and third of all, you don't look for anything. <laughs> It's a happy Easter. Go find your socks. <laughs> My children have gone to a wonderful elementary school in Santa Monica, California that I love so much. And one of the things that's great about it is that um, it, it's so diverse. There really are people from every possible group that you could think of there at that school. And it's a, a really great thing. And I, and I think they've done a good job of, uh, of uh, you know, kind of telling about everybody's background. I remember one time when Thomas E. was in uh, preschool, um, we picked him up one day. And let me just say we picked him up every day. Uh, <laughs> just want to nip in the bud, any rumors that get started there. Yeah, no more interventions, thank you. And uh, we picked him up one day and he was clicking himself into his car seat and with greatest sincerity, he turned to his older sister and said, today we ate square crackers and celebrated the holiday of Passout. <laughs> it was all I could do not to tell him, mommy used to celebrate Passout. <laughs> Kept that to myself. What do you do for a living, ma'am? I work for Yahoo as a facilities coordinator. You work for what? Yahoo. Yahoo? Yes. 
as facilities coordinator? Yeah. But aren't they, I don't know anything about computers, ma'am, so you really, I, I tend to just glaze over when this topic comes up. I've heard of Yahoo. Isn't it some internet-y thingy? <laughs> well, then why would, why would they have a facility? <laughs> Do you notice it's empty? <laughs> so you thought when you went to a website, there was actually someone there? Is that what you were thinking? <laughs> Where did you come from? Were you facilitating somewhere else and they, they saw you facilitating? And they said, how would you like to come facilitate for us? It's basically office management. It's basically office management. Boy, you'd think I'd been hammering at you for hours to get you to that already. <laughs> yeah, after about another five minutes, you're gonna be, all right, I don't do anything. <laughs> I have a website. <laughs> so where were you before there? Uh, Yahoo Hot Jobs. Yahoo Hot Jobs? <laughs> what was Yahoo Hot? That's a different thing? Because I noticed it has the same first name. <laughs> What's Hot Jobs anyways? What does that mean? Oh, this is the professional on Hot Jobs. <laughs> oh, do you work in the Hot Jobs place? Yes. Did someone say stop it? <laughs> Is, it, is this causing anxiety for somebody? I can swear someone would stop it. You're killing her. It's like that scene in E.T. Stop it. Why did you yell stop it? Is anyone near the woman who... I said job it. You, you said job it? You just shouted out job it? And now you're talking about that like it's perfectly normal? No, I yelled, job it. <laughs> Were you assuming because of my rehab experience I'd be supportive? <laughs> yeah, I did. I just yelled, job it. <laughs> well, I'm so glad you were here with us when it happened. <laughs> so many places that would be inappropriate, but here. <laughs> Ma'am, have you ever been with her somewhere before where she just yelled job it like that? Because really it's happened before? And you still go out with her? See, people won't quail hunt with Janie anymore, but the job it girl still gets partners for the evening. So what happened that made you yell job it? Now, because I was talking to her and because it was the hot job thing, so you heard the word job? You must be so good at Scrabble. Because um, you just jumped in and connected right up. You got a triple word score there, didn't you? Job it. Do you work for a place called Job It? Job It. She just said Job It again. That's. It's all I can get out of her. She can say it at different volumes. And it's like, it's like a language made up of just one word. It's just different depending on the expression. Job it. Boy, the lady who's with her is the one I wanna know about. You are so good with her. How do you guys happen to know each other? Do you work for Javi. <laughs> Are you rivals of the Yahoo Hotspot? Oh, man. yeah. When the the Yahoo Hotspot lady went, <laughs> boy, you don't punch out, do you? You just carry that loyalty all the way to the theater. It's like a little scene from West Side Story from heaven's sakes. <laughs> what do you do for job it? We call up em 
employers and we tell them to post on our site. You call up employers uh -huh. and you tell them to post on your site? You just cold call? Yeah. What do you say? Do you just get like a phone book and, <laughs> hello, Antoine's. <laughs> we were wondering if you have any jobs to post? Oh, you would have called us. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Hello, Bob's Bucket Emporium. <laughs> yeah, we were just wondering if you needed any help over there. All righty, thank you. You got it. If that's how you do it? <laughs> how do you know who to call? If... We go to places like Hot Chops. And we... You go to Hot Chops? <laughs> Boy, you are going to get so fired for that endorsement. <laughs> My daughter, Allie, you know, the kids are just so dear. I think I'm the same mom to all three of them, but they are three totally different children, you know? My daughter, Allison, who's 12 years old, she said to me earlier this year, she said, Mom, will you help me study for a science test? And I said, well, sure, honey, why? You got a science test tomorrow? And she said, no, next week. I said, well, then what the hell are you doing? <laughs> you want to remember this stuff, don't you? <laughs> the morning before is not good enough for you? I guess somebody doesn't want to be a poundstone. <laughs> as much as Tosha and I fight, I'm a lot more like her. It's the honest truth. The other day I found, uh, I was doing the laundry and I found her report card in her pants pocket because not only was she not going to show it to me, but she was going to wreck a load of laundry with it as well. <laughs> and I found where she had taken a D minus and taken a marker and made it into a D plus. <laughs> I couldn't help laughing when I talked to her about it. I'm like, Tosha, you're giving me more credit than I'm worth here, you know? I'm not that into nuance, honey. Once you're in the D range, just <laughs> let it ride, babe. I showed her how to make it into a B, and I said, in the future, <laughs> you have a little self-respect. Well, apparently, I guess in California now, there's been a, a, a situation of the thing that happened in Kansas, you know, where they were teaching the, uh, what is it? Uh, where, where they want, where they, if they were going to teach evolution, they uh, did te intelligent design. Which apparently, and now we had one in California. It happened too. Um, and apparently in Kansas, they're not even teaching science anymore. They just what they do is they take the kids, uh, the science students, and the teacher brings them down to a lake and puts them in a burlap sack, <laughs> and uh, they throw them in a lake. And um, if God thinks they're good science students, and <laughs> They float. I believe this to my core that we're going to be blown up very soon. And uh, maybe this isn't good for TV. Maybe this isn't even good for comedy. I firmly believe that we're going to be blown sky high. We've pissed off too many people. Too many people are nuts. We have weapons that people can do that with. And I think it's going to happen. That's all there is to it. It's only a matter of time. Now, once you accept that, I find that I'm much happier. I really do. I, when I go, when I fly, um, I play this game, uh, which is, I'm very nervous about the security line, so I always get there very, very early. I'm usually, um, uh, I, I get to the airport two hours ahead of time, and I'm often the first person at the gate. And, 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 and while I sit there, the rest of the passengers show up, and I think to myself, what if the nuclear blast happened Right now, and uh, right when we were up in the air, excuse me, right when we were up in the air, and now we're the only people left because we were up in the air. And when we land, we have to restart mankind. <laughs> I always, I look around the gate. <laughs> and I think, who would I have sex with? <laughs> Sometimes there's a wife involved, and uh, I 
Because a lot of times I'd go up and tell the winner. And uh, I explained to them, I go, this is not about love. This is about restarting mankind. And I'm very, you know, I'm physically strong. I don't get sick often. I think I would really be good, you know, for the species. <laughs> there might be a little bit of mental illness, but... I don't think it's anything to worry about. I was diagnosed a few years back now with obsessive compulsive disorder. And, uh, you know, everyone has it, actually. Um, you're born with it. It's genetic. It's only diagnosed based on the degree to which it, it, it interrupts your life. And uh, it manifests itself differently in different people. Um, from, it, 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 a lot of people think of it as cleaning Jones, and I do have that, uh, you know. In fact, I've recently written a book called The Crevice Tool, The Forgotten Attachment. And... <laughs> You know, it's that thing where, you know, where you lay down in bed and then you have to get up and do something that really you could have done tomorrow. You know what I mean? It's that thing that just makes you like not feel right until it's done. And a lot of times it's not logical stuff necessarily. It's just stuff that, you know, that you have to do. There's some people that you want to have OCD. You know, I want my accountant to have OCD. I want him to have it up the yin yang. Thank you very much. <laughs> It would be good if my surgeon had OCD. That would be good. But uh, um, anyways, for me, one of the ways in which it manifests itself is that I can't stop talking. And uh, I just, I'm driven to talk all the time. And, you know, um, I mean, I'm really glad you guys are here. But the truth is, even if you weren't, <laughs> I would still be And I've kind of worked it into a job. But socially, it is the biggest drag. It really is. Because I cannot shut up. And everything anybody else says, even I try to listen, I, I just often can't hear them over the sounds of my own voice. <laughs> anything anybody else says reminds me of something that happened to me once. And of course, I cut them off. I'm off and running again. <laughs> you know, Martin Luther King could come to my hotel room tonight and say to me, I had a dream. And I'd say, oh, I had one too, only in mine. <laughs> My poor kids, I lecture and lecture and lecture. It's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a, it's a weird little Jones to have, you know. A lot of times when the show is over, it's very hard for me to get off and uh, just keep going and going. You know, what starts out as my problem eventually will become your problem. <laughs> my shows have actually been reviewed as hostage crises. <laughs> I wrote a book, uh, um, and it's, I don't even know when it's coming out, but sometime. And uh, I, when I started to work on it, I, I'm, uh, it's with uh, I, it's with Random House, but they have so many different umbrellas. I don't, it's with Random House or Crown or Harmony. I, I, I don't know. Uh, it's not with Harlequin. I know that for sure. <laughs> There's nothing I do that would even be in a Harlequin book. Uh, I don't like sex at all there, it's been said. Only in the interest of renewing mankind would I. <laughs> I'm sure there's something horribly wrong with me sexually. I have no doubt of that. Uh, I, I, and that if I, if I went to a sex therapist every day and talked for hours and, and journaled and took medication and watched educational films and worked with plastic figurines. <laughs> I'm sure that it could be overcome, but, but quite honestly, I, 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 right from where I'm standing now, I can't imagine any physical sensation that I would enjoy more than sleep. <laughs> I'm a single working mom with three kids, ten cats, a big stupid dog, a bearded dragon lizard, a bunny, and one ant left from my ant farm. I don't go to bed at night, I pass out. <laughs> The idea that I would go into my bedroom and there'd be someone in there with whom I had to have an activity. <laughs> is just upsetting to me. So I, ma I'm, so I made this deal eight years ago to write a book and, I, and, I, and then I sat in front of blank paper like the person at the Academy Awards always makes the speech about writing the script and the loneliness of the blank paper and I couldn't do it 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 and then I finally realized I was supposed to write about me and I just was, I, there was no reason to write about me who, who cares about me it was just, so I finally realized if I wrote 
about Abraham Lincoln. I couldn't shut up about me. So that's exactly what I did. I spent eight years writing and researching. I wrote a book that's a series of biographies of towering historic figures. And in the telling of their story, I told my own. As it turns out, I had so much in common with them. It was hard to separate myself from Joan of Arc after a while. Just this reminded me and that reminded me. I, I, you know, and, and I, apparently, I'm not a writer, really. Uh, I got it back from the editor, and clearly I was out when they went over the semicolon in school. <laughs> I never in my entire life have written a semicolon. You know, I don't use a computer, but when I was younger and I typed, my pinky wasn't strong enough to use a semicolon. <laughs> I, 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 apparently, I use it verbally, like orally. I guess I use a semicolon a lot. Like if you were to transcribe what I say, apparently it's semicolon, semicolon, semicolon. <laughs> Is there anybody here who happens to teach English and knows when you use a semicolon? When it's two complete It's what? When it's two complete thoughts. When it's two complete thoughts? When, when they could be sentences on their own. When they could be sentences on their own? Yeah. The What's single. the matter? <laughs> What's the matter with a period? Okay, but you don't use a conjunction. You just separate them with a semicolon. You, you just separate them with a semicolon? Can you give me an example, sir? <laughs> with the man beside you is raising his hand. Apparently you guys don't have the convert kind of relationship where you just speak freely. He can't, I can. He can't, I can. <laughs> oh, that was a semicolon. <laughs> Why wouldn't you use a period there? It's a style choice. It's a style choice. Huh. And you've been using semicolons all this time, you stylish little fellow, you? <laughs> what, what, what do you do for a living, sir? I'm working for an attorney. You're working for an attorney? Yeah. I hate attorneys. <laughs> you too? I had, I had a really bad attorney at one point. I swear to God. I, 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 the guy came back from the talking to the... Came over to my little defense table and told me that he'd gotten me, my probation reduced. Turned out he got me the death penalty. <laughs> and when I tried to argue, he said, no, no, it's better. You don't have to check in as often. <laughs> I'm a bad driver. I'm a terrible driver. And by the way... When you honk and yell at me, it in no way improves my performance. <laughs> People honk and yell at me all the time. They roll down their window and yell, asshole. <laughs> I roll my window down and go, you don't know the half of it. <laughs> Why would that be a good thing to do? Our van makes a beeping noise. I just figured this out. Our van makes a beeping noise just before you crash into something from behind. <laughs> the last several accidents I've had, the last thing I said was, what the hell is that noise? What do you do for a living, ma'am? That lady right there. I write. You write? Yeah. What do you mean you write? I write really, really boring stuff. You re write really, really boring stuff? And even knowing that, you won't change? <laughs> Usually you get a couple of reviews like that and you... What, what do you mean you write really, really boring stuff? Uh, I write basically book reports about insurance filings. Book reports about insurance filings? I love that. And not a lot of adjectives? Did you know how the semicolon was used? <laughs> Did you know how the semicolon was used? Yeah, usually. You do know how to use the semicolon? And yet when I asked earlier, I don't recall your hand shooting up. <laughs> you just decided I was on my own with that? Why, he was holding your hand down? Is that the kind of relationship you have? <laughs> you know, when you're something you're good at, you should be able to say so. You should not have someone telling you not to say that you knew about semicolons. What do you do for a living, sir? Clearly you're in charge of her. 
Well, if you must know, I'm in banking. You're in banking? Yeah. Wow. Are you in the loan department? <laughs> I tried to get a loan at my bank. The guy wouldn't even let me borrow the pen to fill out the form. <laughs> Where did you guys meet? Are you married or just here together or engaged? I didn't think people did that anymore. That's the cutest little thing. Really? How do you, when, when you're engaged, is it because one of you said to the other, let's get married? Yeah. Was there an engagement ring? Was it like that? Yeah. Oh, that is the cutest little thing. <laughs> so who, do, who, did, so who proposed, to, did you propose to her, like in kind of a traditional? And I say if women propose to men. Women, did you say women propose to yeah, men? That, how many women do you hear proposing to men? How many women do you hear proposing to men? Yeah, what kind of a question is it? Did I propose to <laughs> No, you don't. No, I'll handle this. It certainly explains him not letting you raise your hand about the semicolon. <laughs> Ma'am. What? How many women do you hear proposing? No, you're right. It's true, sir. Somebody to propose to her. What kind of a question is it? <laughs> First of all, I didn't know it was going to upset you. And... <laughs> Number one, I didn't know you're so sensitive on this issue. But no, I, I guess I thought maybe it did happen sometimes. I guess I'm wrong, and I accept that because I'm like that. I'm able to do that. But I guess I was thinking that it was more like a thing that two people kind of decided together necessarily more than the guy swaggering in <laughs> little lady have I got a special idea for you <laughs> now what if she handled your question the way you handled mine what kind of a question is that <laughs> Will you marry me? What are you talking about? <laughs> Have you ever heard anyone ask me that before? <laughs> I have never seen you that upset before. <laughs> Was it something at the bank that set you off earlier? Because I feel it can't be that question because it wasn't that upsetting. But there must have been something that had you kind of like a mousetrap, like in that catalyst ready to go off. Like you probably turned her earlier if one more thing goes wrong tonight. <laughs> and you said, honey, maybe we shouldn't go. No, I want to go. <laughs> I want to laugh and have a good time. <laughs> but I'm telling you, if one person says something that makes no sense to me... <laughs> The engagement is off. <laughs> Ma'am. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> I'm sure it was something at the bank. I'm sure it was a tough day at the bank or maybe. Where, where did you guys meet originally? I went with my best girlfriend to her office Christmas party, and he works for the same place as her. You went with your best girlfriend to your office Christmas, her office Christmas party, and he worked at the same place with her. Oh, isn't that sweet? And so you saw him, like, you know, just standing around chatting, maybe with maybe like a reindeer thing on that people put on at Christmas, and you said, "Hey, who's that fun-loving guy over there?" And let me guess, you didn't ask him anything right off the bat. <laughs> He was... <laughs> so you work with Linda? Of course I work with Linda! <laughs> what kind of a question is that? Would I be here if I didn't work with stinking Linda? <laughs> Thank you.
I, uh... I thought I might do feel a little puppet show. About feet. There's a love story that took place around Christmas time last year. Hey, how are you? <laughs> what kind of a question is that? <laughs> God, I'm in a weird mood. I think I'm handling it really well, though, and that's the important thing. I, um, I often wish that I had a degenerative disease. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. I'm tired and achy all the time anyways. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to feel any worse, but if I had a degenerative disease, the exact same behavior I have now would be considered courageous. <laughs> I could roll out of bed about noon and somebody in the other room would whisper, she insisted on getting up. <laughs> she gives until she simply can't give anymore. You know, Ella Fitzgerald once worked on this stage, but did she put her butt on the floor? No. <laughs> That's what makes me special. All right, you guys, well, it is kind of... Giving up modeling wasn't easy for me. <laughs> I'm trying to think what I can leave you with that's somehow meaningful and deep. Um, probably, yeah, I know, probably nothing. What? My cats? How do you know about my cats? <laughs> My cat, Scout, died, you know. Well, she was very old, and quite frankly, she wasn't that happy. She'd spent the last year of her life sitting in a rocking chair, projectile vomiting. <laughs> All right, I'm trying to think of what's meaningful and deep that I can leave you with. I died about 15 years ago. My heart stopped for a minute. And I can tell you this about that. There is no bright light. <laughs> And there's nobody waving you anywhere. <laughs> Unless, of course, there's a one-minute waiting period that I'm not familiar with. <laughs> or unless my friends and loved ones are avoiding me, even in death. <laughs> cover the light, cover the light. <laughs> I thank you so very much. You've been a wonderful day.